let's start remembering our fundamental block diagram structure for this course. Okay, so uh, in the discrete time system course, the idea is we have a plant uh, which has a continuous time dynamical system representation, ideal and LTI system, and we want to control this plant using a digital control structure. Digital control structure has a controller where we design our controllers, which uh, we assume that uh, perfectly runs in discrete time. And this controller interfaces with the plant using two uh, operators. One of them is a sampler, which is technically idealized version of an analog digital controller, and a zero order hold, an idealized version of a digital to analog converter. Okay, let's uh, start with the sampler. We already uh, talked about the sampling, uh, and let's uh, quickly review uh, our fundamental knowledge. Okay. A sampler can be idealized in terms of an ideal continuous time to discrete time sampler, where our continuous time signal is sampled into a purely discrete time signal like this, okay, from ET to E of K. Okay, so in this case, we technically lose information of capital T or sampling time or sampling frequency. Of course, we can store it somewhere else, but mathematically, in this case, we lose the information of sampling uh, frequency or sampling time. The other technique is, uh, we sample using an impulse sampler technique, okay, which looks like this. So in this case, the original signal is in continuous time. It's technically a smooth, it doesn't have to be smooth, but continuous uh, time signal. And when we sample it, it's still in continuous time, but instead of discrete time sequences, we have sequence on, or array of impulse trains. Okay, so it's an impulse train representation. Okay, the basic idea here, when we do an impulse sampling strategy, we assume that our signal is still in continuous time domain. Okay, good. So let's analyze this impulse sampling strategy and try to make a connection between impulse sampler and discrete time sampler. Okay, good. So, okay, we have x star of t, which is equal to, if you remember, uh, k equals zero to infinity, x of k t delta t minus k t. Okay, so if I multiply as continuous time signal with this impulse train, it can be said a uh, unit impulse train, we obtain this signal. Okay, instead of x k of t, we can also use k is zero to infinity x of k impulse t minus k t. Okay. As you can see, this is our discrete time signal that we originally obtained if we use a uh, continuous time discrete time sampler, and it stores our uh, sampled information. And this impulse train signal technically storing us our sampling time or sampling frequency information. Okay, good. So let's take the Laplace transform of this start signal, and let's call it x star of s. Okay, so x star of s is equal to Laplace transform of this expression. Okay, so as you can see, let's change the color. This part doesn't depend on t, right? And when we take the Laplace transform, we take the integral with respect to uh, t. So we can just move it here. Okay, k is zero to infinity x of k, and Laplace transform of this part. Okay, so what is Laplace transform of an impulse function? It's simply, as uh, we, we know it, equal to e to the power minus s. s instead of t, we'll write k t. Okay, that's it. Okay, so this is our now Laplace transform. Okay, so what we can do is, we can replace it with a something else, z to the power minus k, where z is equal to 1 over t ln s, x star of s, when z is replaced with 1 over t ln s, becomes equal to k is 0 to infinity x of k, c to power minus k, we know that it's equal to x of c. Okay, that's great. So what does it mean? It means that this start 
signal in Laplace or time domain information is technically a discrete time signal, but it still carries some information associated with the continuous time domain. It is important uh, for us because uh, even if we sample uh, our uh, measurements uh, to obtain feedback, we still want to control a continuous time controller, continuous time plan, sorry for that. Okay. So x star of f is technically equal to x of z if you make a necessary change of uh, variables from s to z. Now let's talk about uh, data hold circuits. Okay. So a zero order hold is a uh, version of a data hold circuit which uh, converts a discrete time or digital signal into analog or continuous time signal. Okay. So in this course, as I told you before, we will uh, specifically use zero order hold circuit. Uh, and if you will see that uh, there are different kind of uh, hold circuits, their models in the textbook, I will only uh, consider zero order hold because practically in almost all of the digital controllers, you will only see zero order hold operation because it's simple and it's useful. And other uh, high order holds doesn't bring much uh, practical or theoretical inf uh, like benefit anyway. Okay, so what is a zero order hold operation from discrete time to a uh, continuous time point of view? Okay, so we have a discrete time signal x of t and output is h of t. Technically, you can say that h kt plus t is equal to h x kt or x of k for t is greater than zero, less than t. Technically, it says that in between two sampling instants, your uh, output or your signal is constant. Okay, so it measures the information at the beginning of the signal, or it uh, technically uh, stores uh, this information uh, from the uh, memory of the digital controller, and then it pushes to the output, and it keeps it constant until the second uh, next sampling instant. Operation is technically mathematically very simple. Okay, but we will do something else, and uh, let's talk about what happens if we use impulse train approach. Can we do better than just uh, using this simple uh, mathematical relation? Okay, so in this case, let's assume that we use an impulse sampler. Okay, and of course we have a, a discrete time looking signal, but it's not. It's continuous time impulse train approach, and our output. The uh, origin output of the zero order hold operator. In this case, as you can see, all of the signals are in continuous time. Okay, so if this signal is continuous time, if this signal is in continuous time, the question is can we write a transfer function or uh, can we use a linear time invariant representation for zero order hold operation? This is the whole idea of using star signals. Uh, in digital controllers, uh, because we will be able to uh, model zero order hold operator with a discrete time, or uh, no, with a continuous time transfer function, I think, which is crazy, uh, which is a crazy thing to do. Okay, so how we can do that? Let's analyze it from a different perspective. Okay, so here we go. Okay, now let's try to write h of t. Okay, so h of t. Okay, and let's concentrate on this part from zero to t is equal to t. We know that this is equal to x zero, it's constant. Okay, so it, since it's constant, we can write this as a difference of two step functions u of t minus u of t minus t. Okay. So if I leave h of t like this, it will be this, right? This is, and this will be equal to x zero, and we have a single rectangle. Okay, very good. Now let's concentrate on the uh, next sequence from t is equal to t to t is equal to two t x t. Right, okay. U t minus t minus u t minus two t. Okay, this is great. Now let's concentrate on from two t to three t x two t u t minus two t minus u 
t minus 3t. And if we keep the pattern, we will see that 3t q t minus t, not t, 3t, q t minus 4t, and it goes like this. Okay, that's good. Uh, if we write it in a compact form, we can simply write that this is equal to k is equal to 0 to infinity x kt. Okay, that's great. Uh, and this is equal to u t minus kt minus u t minus k plus 1t. That's great. Okay, so it is a technical a step tree. Okay, we can say that, or rectangle train, or something like this. Uh, these are difference of uh, two-step functions, and we have weights, which are the technically uh, signals coming uh, to the input. Okay, that's great. So the question is, can I take the Laplace transform of H? H of T to compute H of S. Of course, I can do that. And let's see what happens. Okay, this is great. So let's write this again. Okay, so h of t is equal to k is 0 to infinity x k of t u t minus k t minus u t minus k plus 1 t. Okay, I you cannot see that, but it's uh, not very critical. Okay, so now let's compute h of s. h of s. Okay, good. So let's look at this. This part doesn't depend on s. So I can just leave it out, in, out of the Laplace transform. Okay, 0 to infinity kt. Okay. So what is the Laplace transform for a delayed step function? It's simply equal to s. And uh, since we have a delay uh, in time domain, delay has a transfer function form of minus k t s. Is it correct? It's correct. Minus, this is s, e to minus k plus 1 t s. That's great. Okay, so uh, we are going something. So what we can do is we can uh, try to simplify this as much as possible if we can do it, of course. Okay, so, okay, so let's change it. K is zero to infinity. Okay, x, k, t. Okay, what I can do that is this. Okay, so this can write this like this. Minus t s divided by s times e to bar minus k t s. Right? Okay, so good. Uh, I just uh, made an information. As you can see, this doesn't depend on k. So I can write this like this. Minus e to bar minus t s divided by s times k is 0 to infinity x k of t e to the power minus k t s. Okay, great. So we are going somewhere here and I hope you can recognize it. Okay, so very nice. I already obtained information. This is what h of s. Okay, so this is new, but this is not new. What is this? This is simply equal to x star of s, which is x star of s is the Laplace terms of, of the input signal of the uh, zero order hold operation. Okay, so in that sense, I can write that h of s is equal to 1 minus e to the power minus t s divided by s times x star of s. So what we found that there's a transfer function relation between x star of s and h of s. And this is equal to transfer function of the zero order hold operator.